Now, there are fears climate change is causing more rain and less snow to fall on the Himalayas, leading to an increase in deadly landslides on the world's tallest mountain range. Data collected from Mount Everest Base Camp, base camp shows that 75% of precipitation in the region's summer fell as rain. That's up from 32% in 2022 and 43% in 2021. This increased rainfall can cause landslides, rockfalls, soil erosion and flooding in already fragile mountain environments in northern India. At least 72 people have died in landslides and flash floods this week. To take us through the research and what it means, we're speaking now with one of the study's authors, Mohamed Ambadi. Welcome to ABC News. Thank you so much for joining us. And just firstly, Mohamed Ambadi, how much of a shift has there been in the weather pattern overall for the Himalayas? Well, so basically uh, what is related to our study regarding the Himalayas issue um, is that we have known for quite some time that global warming is increasing the intensity of precipitation. However, our study is the first that looked at how much of this extreme precipitation is coming in the form of rain as opposed to snow. Um, and what we found in our study is that when you examine the liquid part separately, what we call rainfall, then the increase due to global warming is actually double what we previously thought and observed. We previously thought that for each one degree Celsius of warming, there is an increase of 7% in precipitation. And our results in this study is showing that this number can actually be up to 15% uh, in certain parts of the globe. Those are high elevation mountainous regions including the Himalaya. Um, and in fact, our results are showing that the Himalaya is experiencing even more of an amplified increase than other mountain ranges. So in terms of the impact that's being seen there in the Himalayas, what are those factors that you believe may be contributing to it being um, more pronounced uh, in the Himalayas compared to other uh, mountain ranges in the Northern Hemisphere? Right. So uh, the first thing here to realize is that there is an increased proportion of uh, precipitation coming as rain as opposed to snow. So that's one. Uh, but there is another factor to consider here in the case of the Himalaya, which is with elevated temperatures, there is an accelerated rate of melting glaciers. And when you have these two processes acting together synergistically, uh, then they exacerbate and they amplify the increase of flooding, uh, which uh, is most likely the, the main reasons behind the devastating events that we have seen over the past month in the Himalaya. Uh, it's, it's early in terms of the research that is now measuring the, um, the rate of increase in, in rainfall. Uh, but what might we take from this latest information with long-term implications um, around reduced snowfalls and increased rainfall for the Himalayas? Well, I think for the Himalayas, as well as other mountainous regions uh, across the Northern Hemisphere, there are two important messages here. Uh, one is that every degree of warming matters. So our results are showing that for each one degree of warming, uh, we project another 15% increase in rainfall extremes, and that is quite substantial. Um, so I think people need to be aware of the negative consequences of how much uh, greenhouse gases we put into the atmosphere, especially for those vulnerable regions such as the Himalaya. So that's the first message. I think the second message, which is even more important, um, is that our infrastructure was designed for a climate that no longer exists. And I think this is very clear as we hear news of washed out bridges, damaged railroads, um, as well as the swamped homes. All of this is telling us that uh, we need to change the way we design infrastructure uh, to be in line with those increases in, uh, in the amount of precipitation and rainfall due to global warming. Mohamed Ambadi, um, do you anticipate that this situation may well now accelerate um, as we see a shift towards warming? Yeah, so in, in our study, um, the data is actually telling us that this has been happening over the past few decades. So it's not only 
a far off problem that is predicted to happen in the future. So that's the first thing that we need to realize. Uh, but we also project and anticipate that this will increase uh, at a constant rate as, as we see more warming. Um, and again, it's very important that we incorporate those increases in the way we design infrastructure to be more resilient in a warmer climate. Mohamed Ambadi with the University of Michigan, we thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us here on ABC News. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, now it is time to check in on the sport.